Hi everyone, it's Christina from Shakespeare's. We are Shakespeare and Puppets, and welcome to today's... Whoa! What? Hello, darlings, am I in the right place? Whoa, Christina, is that who I think it is? I think so, Shakespeare. Everyone, welcome to today's episode, Tony Award-winning director... And costume designer. And Tony Award-winning costume designer. And dancer. And dancer. And painter. And painter. And photographer. And photographer. Oh, and writer. And writer. And... And actor, darling. Of course, and actor. Please welcome to today's People of Power episode, Jeffrey Holder. Woohoo! Bravo! Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Shakespeare. Wow! You really did all of that? Of course I did. Why not? Man, I don't even have one career. Of course you do. Listen, darlings, here's what I do. I walk through doors. If I'm not wanted in a place, there's something wrong with the place. Not with me. Ooh! That's great advice. Now, tell us about yourself. How did you get started in all of these amazing artistic endeavors? Well, I was born on August 1st, 1930, on the island of Trinidad in the Caribbean. Wow! An island! How beautiful! It was. And one could argue that talent runs in the family. Jeffrey started learning to paint and to dance from his older brother Bosco at a very young age. Yeah, I always looked up to Bosco. He taught me a lot, and I made my performing debut with his company, the Hoda Dance Company, when I was just seven years old. Wow! Talent does run in the family! By the time Jeffrey was 15, he was showcasing his own paintings. And when his older brother moved to London in 1950, he took over running the dance company. Wow! I was 19 at the time. Then a few years later, an American dancer and choreographer saw me perform and invited me to New York to audition for a famous arts manager and supporter. Jeffrey wasted no time. He sold 17 of his paintings to pay for the trip to New York. Ooh, a successful painter and budding dancer headed for the Big Apple. That's right, Shakespeare. New York was wonderful. It was so marvelous to hear the music in the streets and see the stylish ladies tripping down Fifth Avenue, all of them lovely and all of them going somewhere. Jeffrey started dancing professionally and teaching dance for work. Soon he made his Broadway debut in a show called House of Flowers. Hmm, wait a second. Wasn't our friend Alvin Ailey a dancer in that show as well? Yes, Shakespeare, that's right. Amazing! I met another important person in that show as well. Carmen de Lavalade. Ooh, why was she so special? Well, I can't tell you exactly why, but I made it my life's mission to find out. I asked her to marry me just a few days after we met, and after a month, she said yes. Whoa! We were a great team. She's a brilliant dancer and choreographer in her own right, and we stayed married for the rest of my life. Oh, Yay, love! And... Carmen stayed good friends with Alvin Ailey. I even created a piece for the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre in 1968. Cool! Once in New York, Jeffrey's artistic talents blossomed. He worked as a principal dancer at the Metropolitan Opera Ballet for two years. He was cast in an all-black version of the play Waiting for Godot. And he received a Guggenheim Fellowship for his painting. And then... I started making movies. Ooh, the moving pictures! Oh yes, I played lots of roles in the movies. 
Jones, the Cheshire Cat, the genie of the lamp, a mysterious magician. I was Punjab in the 1982 movie Annie. And I was even a scary villain in a James Bond movie. Ooh, how thrilling! But Jeffrey Holder's artistic endeavors are far from over. We haven't even talked about his career as a theater maker. <gasps> what? Oh, yes. In 1974, I started to work on The Wiz, which was an all-black musical version of The Wizard of Oz. I came on as director and costume designer for the Broadway run. It was for that show that Mr. Holder won the Tony Award, which is considered the highest honor in the theater world for both best director and best costume design. Yes, darling, it's true. After that, I directed and choreographed a Broadway show called Timbuktu in 1978. And guess what, folks? It's not over yet. You're right, Christina. I did a lot of voiceover work later in my life. That's where you record your voice for things like cartoons, video games, or even puppet shows. Puppet shows? Really? <laughs> yes. I did some voiceover work in an episode of a TV puppet show called Bear in the Big Blue House. Ooh! I love that show! You might also recognize his voice as the narrator from the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in 2005. Ah, yes! Wow! What a fantastic career! Wait! Shakespeare, we're not done! Oh, we haven't even talked about my books. Your, your books? Of course. I co-wrote and illustrated a book about folk tales from the Caribbean called Black Gods Green Islands. I co-wrote another book about black fashion in the 1940s through modern times called The Way We Wore, Black Style Then. And I wrote a cookbook, Jeffrey Holder's Caribbean Cookbook. Ooh, Christina, maybe I should learn how to cook. Sure, Shakespeare, why not? I say, go for it. After a hugely fulfilling life, spanning many areas of success, Jeffrey Holder passed away in 2014 at the age of 84. That's right, Christina. I left this world with a final dance with my son, Leo, to one of my favorite pieces of music. Leo was visiting me in the hospital. I left this world the way I lived in it. Dancing! Wow! Thank you so much for sharing your amazing story, Mr. Holder. Now I feel like there's nothing I can't do. I'm glad. Now go out and tackle the world. That goes for you all, too. Bye, Mr. Holder. Bye, Christina and Shakespeare. I look forward to seeing your creative projects. Oh, bye, Mr. Holder. I'm going to learn to cook and dance. To learn more about pursuing a life in the arts, check out these books from your local bookstore or your local library. Ira's Shakespeare Dream by Glenda Armand, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Little Melba and Her Big Trombone by Catherine Russell Brown, illustrated by Frank Morrison. Knockin' on Wood, starring Peg Leg Bates by Lynn Barash. Special thanks to Jarrell L. Henderson, who voiced Jeffrey Holder. You can directly support him here. Special thanks to Gina Verdi at the Astoria Bookshop. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Please like and share this video. It really helps us out. And if you have an amazing person of color in mind that you would like to hear more about, let us know. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email on our website, shakespeares.com. Our videos are released every Tuesday and Thursday, so we'll see you then. Bye!